By 2050, we will have 10 billion mouths to feed in a world profoundly altered by environmental change. In How to Feed the World, a diverse group of experts breaks down this crucial challenge by tackling 12 big issues one by one. Number one, population. The nuances of population, where it's growing or declining, at what speed and why, are complex matters. In this critical chapter, Dr. Waldorf explores our world's population and what population growth means to food security. Number two, water. The small fraction of water that is actually usable for humans is distributed unevenly across the globe. Yet we face growing demands for water and over extraction. In this chapter, doctors Bowling and Churkauer take a hard look at the issue. Number three, land. Land is a finite resource and arable land is even more precious still. There is no more land to be mined, built or bought once we've occupied it all. In this chapter, doctors Doring and Sorensen take a hard look at the question, will we have enough farmland? Number four, climate. If temperatures are too hot, plants and animals, as well as the workers tending to them, suffer greatly. If there is too little rain or too much, crops will fail. Doctors Hurdle and Dukes address this issue and more in this chapter on climate change. Number five, technology. What drove the world's meteoric rise in agricultural output? Technological innovation. But this monumental accomplishment did not come without cost. In this chapter, Dr. Baldos covers the reality of technological innovation and food production from its inception to today. Number six, food systems. Is your food organic, local, conventional, or perhaps even genetically modified? In this chapter, four cutting edge experts have teamed together to overview how and how we choose the way our food finds its way to our plate. Number seven, international trade. Unlike manufactured products or banking services, agriculture is tied to climate and soils. The only way certain regions can enjoy fresh food during winter is to import. What's more, international trade is a buffer against unforeseen weather events around the globe. In this chapter, Dr. Hurdle covers the nuances of international trade in our food system and reviews the facts and fictions of trade policy. Number eight, food waste and food loss. In this chapter, Dr. Foster explores the enormous magnitude of food loss and waste, as well as the shocking geographical dividers of where each one happens, and he covers what we can do to fight against them. Number nine, health. Food and good nutrition keep us healthy. Yet obesity is on the rise, and so are the related health problems that come along with it. In this chapter, Dr. Wu evaluates this problem using an economic approach that is simple, clear, and concise. Number 10, social license to operate. In this chapter, Dr. Widmar discusses our power as a society to grant social licenses to operate. Chapter 11, communication. In this chapter, Jessica Eyes reviews our current state of communication around food and agriculture, pinpoints particularly stubborn problems, and proposes solutions to enhancing our flow of information. And last, but certainly not least, is the most important challenge of all, number 12, achieving equal access. Why is our access to food unequal, and how can we fix that? In this chapter, Dr. Shively takes readers on a tour that stretches from Kathmandu to Copenhagen and from caviar to corn, examining the contributing roles of income, prices, and public action in determining the size and composition of someone's next meal. That wraps up How to Feed the World. Learn more about these critical issues by reading How to Feed the World. Find it on Amazon, Kindle, or Island Press.